I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Um, maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction to this, this wonderful film, Leaving to Remain. Um, what can people expect when they watch it? So they will expect, uh, they will uh, be surprised by a positive uh, migrant story uh, made in really difficult time. So we really have a, quite a lot of solidarity and quite extraordinary free personalities uh, filming themselves. So it's quite a surprise out outcome. Mm. And of course, um, migration stories and, and stories of immigrants, particularly here in the UK, very, very relevant right now. Um, but we realised actually watching this film that that certainly the Roma community is not one that's often portrayed on film or depicted in film, whether in fictional or in documentary um, cinema. So um, what was the, the the background to this film for you? How did you first become involved and why did you want to make the film? Um, but so I'm the one who really quite a lot in my life make film about Roma, not by choice, but it's just by uh, by accident. I just came to the story in the 90s and I started this trilogy. And the first film was uh, called uh, uh, Black and White in Color. And uh, it was the portrait about uh, Black Roma, uh, Roma, uh, Roma singer. And she became very popular and they call her uh, European Billie Holiday. And uh, she she really have a six or seven CDs, and uh, she really have a huge concert in in uh, in UK, but um, uh, she's much more known in uh, in uh, France. And uh, that was the after the Velvet Revolution, and the Czech Republic became democratic society, Czechoslovakia then then split in two. And uh, I noticed that uh, really when they're splitting in two countries, the only citizens who really have a problem is the Roma community. So they they suddenly with the new law or the kind of uh, people who live in Czech Republic and they are not born, their grandparents not born in a Czech Republic, they become really not Czech citizen. And uh, it was a, a surprisingly drama for me, so I decided to really follow the story. And uh, with the black and white in color, uh, the BBC it uh, bought the film for story well. So it's uh, this first uh, um, Czech film bought by uh, BBC, and uh, that's the beginning of the my long relationship with Nick Fraser and story well. And so I made another four story wells, and from these four, uh, another one was about the Roma issue, and it was the uh, film called. Um, Summer Better. This is the second part of trilogy, and we have now this uh, third one calling "Living to Remain," and all these three names telling you a lot about uh, the Rama community: black and white in color, summer better, living to remain. So it's a co constantly Europe really failing to integrate uh, a Rama community, and most uh, um, poverty you will find in that community, and uh, often we blame them and we will do all this negative stigma. And uh, we having experience with the Roma community for such a long time, I do have a very good connection with them and I have access uh, to follow story. And after these 30 years, I've really discovered that uh, uh, it's important they can have a story and the, 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 the voice can be heard. And when I start living to remain, I went I went with the idea to make film about educated Roma because they have a first time in their life in UK by English law. Kids, when they're, when they're in UK, they have a rights to go to mainstream education. What is not the story in the country of origins. So, and uh, I really did the interview for almost a year rehearsing and searching for the really proper character for the film. And it's quite tricky too, because it's really, you never really know what you are going to get and what will happen in the life. And it's a kind of a really need to be connection, what really kind of you have a feeling that is going to be good enough to, to, to survive for, for a, a, a fiction documentary. So some are better. Um, uh, really opened completely my mind and the, the, on the scale of this um, uh, problem what they face in their country. There is almost 700 people I interviewed and they all the old generation saying they came to UK uh, for their kids to have education. Mm -hmm. So it's not about they had going here to have a better life, to make more money or to, to start, but what is absolutely okay. So you can travel we are free people and we go. Man. But to, to to travel, just the UK to have education, it was kind of really shocking uh, answer what I get all the time. And I was thinking, it will be really nice to see in 10 years time, these kids, they kids really have access to what they achieved. So then I find in a, 
uh, the, the topic for my film, and I, I call that dream makers. So that was before COVID, before Brexit. And I didn't have a clue that it's going to be Brexit. And nobody really believed it's going to happen, but happened. So suddenly the story was about how these educated people, because it's quite a lot of them, you can choose from any kind of scientist department or for architects or the, the you name it, it's just really well educated people. And uh, so how they contribute to their society, how they help this society. And the, the choosing this free in, in the end in the film, it was the people who really do most of a really spare time, really hours and hours helping. And I choose Andre because he really helped with the inclusive education. So he go to the secondary schools and he do this project. Denisa was really much more social justice law and another part of the really huge issue. And you really need to have a social justice if you really want to survive when you're a migrant in UK. And then a Petter who really, who really is... Um, uh, in the film, he begin with the policeman. He he become detective, and then he decide that he is going uh, having a compass and a charity organization helping community. He really make his own hub, and he really do really well. So so suddenly, I have a three characters who really have a kind of three different point for you, and everyone is different, but we are talking about same same community. And, um, and that was going to be my next question about, like, you know, narrowing it down to these three incredible individuals, which obviously you follow. Um, and then, of course, <clears throat> the way the, the documentary has ended up kind of morphing almost into to something else because of, of COVID. Um, so they almost stop filming themselves and we get all this kind of this really sort of intimate insight into their everyday lives um, because they're sort of recording themselves. So that mustn't have been in the plan to begin with. So was that quite a... A pivot for you and um, you've managed to sort of incorporate it beautifully into the final film uh it was really kind of hell for me because i really start the film with the babington academy but it's the first part of the film begin with andre with the idea that i'm going to, to make story about educated people and what is really in the point for you what you have when you have education suddenly you have a different perspective and you have a different different point for you and uh, it's a beautiful colorful portrait of of, of young generation and of the issue what they uh uh they have, but uh, with the COVID, suddenly it's not, it's not possible to film and we are not allowed. And uh, it's it's mean that I really need to drop the film, but I have a contract with the Czech uh, and Slovak Film Fund and I need to deliver film. So I really need to figure out what I can do. So uh, we kind of uh, start thinking and I, I, I get the idea that maybe we can find some solution if we can get the... Um, uh, it wasn't really a problem to get the iPhone or have any kind of Canon camera. Problem was that they really don't scare them with the technology. When they have a material, how do you 4K quality what you need to be for cinema transfer and put uh, on board and uh, to, to us to cutting group and there is no person between that to travel and socialize. So, and then we discovered that this exists new, uh, now it's completely normal. It's a board called Collect, and it's designed actually for young people who really do extreme sport. They can have a Super 8 camera with a 4K quality. So it's quality what is needed for the cinema. So that's how we begin. And then I learned that uh, it's not possible to make with them because Denisa is lawyer. She never really have a camera in her hands and she doesn't really have the time to have a camera in her hands. She worked from six in the morning until one in the night and she spent every minute to help another vulnerable person around. So I really discovered that uh, her son, who is teenager and really becoming a uh, um, uh, new filmmaker, I can sense that. So I kind of really start with them. And I said to producers, so, so let's go for six months. And uh, it's a six months, it's a huge platform for me to WhatsApp uh, um, kind of uh, one by one uh, course, film course. But you need to teach them really cinema verite and kind of uh, free movement uh, 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 and what is really mean uh, close up, what is really mean, mean moment they can do in the same style what is my film. So, so I really teach them that it's personal point for you. It's really core that, that we really start really working together. And also they are really, they camera filming what they are seeing and their experience. So, so we start like that, but they go completely crazy and completely three different directions. So, and then I really kind of sit down and write down fiction uh, script by, with idea, 
because knowing knowing them and knowing their life, I said, look, you can do this, you can do this, and you can do this. And then I set up really structure. So I said, look, we are going to have a proper audio interview with the childhood experience in the Czech Republic, then the settling up in the UK, and then really education, and then really settling professionally. So they have the same question, and I've sent them five five pages really hundred questions but really actually shock them but then help them kind of to have a sense of filmmaking and opening up but i could really help with the uh, censorship because we all have our personal censorship and when we are filming ourselves it's completely different when when you film somebody else so i kind of left that kind of soft approach and uh, because i want them to feel comfortable because we are we are giving to each other really huge trust and we really go on a journey together and these two years what's happened it's actually basic observation uh with ourselves in our lives uh, in this free location and they almost almost all the time in the bedroom or on the living room because it was the lockdown but to give us really kind of really beautiful access what is covid mean and what is brexit mean in real life uh, for the uh, uh, migrant point of view and uh, it's surprisingly positive point of view i was going to say that actually that i think what i found really striking watching it is despite kind of what can seem just almost like overwhelming circumstances you know so facing discrimination where they're from coming to the uk kind of having this you know opportunity for a bright future then that sort of getting shut down, you know, or at least seeming less possible with Brexit, COVID then coming on board. Yeah, each of the three individuals remain incredibly optimistic, incredibly tenacious. Um, and, and there's a lot of positivity in the film. So is that something that really struck you and, and was kind of a great thing to capture in the film? It is. Uh, I really, I tried very hard to have a concept that we are not going to have negative stigma because this community live in the negative stigma and all begin with that negative stigma. We are aware or we are not aware. So I, I was aware of that and I try to avoid it. So and I also want to have a real uh, story drama. So uh, Denisa saying quite a lot about uh, her life in the Czech Republic and uh, she really pick properly what is really mean that segregation education, but she never really go above herself. So she constantly stay from the her point of view. So the, uh, Petr too and Andre, and I was really kind of like a filmmaker, I will really go bigger and I will uh, di di dig deeper, but actually, uh, when I choose that is going to be uh, without negative stigma, so I really need to kind of uh, find the ba my balance and say, okay, I really need to respect that and let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's live there. There. So this is the kind of uh, compromise what I did like a filmmaker, director, uh, uh, directing on WhatsApp. <laughs> and of course, there must have been lots of sort of challenging moments along the way. Um, but what really stood out to you as kind of maybe the most difficult point and on the flip side was a real highlight for you uh, or a moment that you really love that's in the film now um i was really worried about andre quite a lot because uh, uh um it's a young boy falling in love and bringing to a new woman girl what is very young girl uh, to london with no long uh, long skill a skill with no um finishing the secondary school. So she just was really three months before the end of the uh, <clears throat> exam. And uh, I was, and the, her parents are absolutely against. And all this uh, in-school project, what he do, so he was running in-school pro project, um, what is the paid by uh, European um, uh, council. And it was a beautiful project, uh, helping the uh, school. It was a chosen 27 school in Europe. Uh, from this 27, five was in uh, Britain, who are really doing bad with inclusion. And they're choosing the hub schools like Babington, what is really good example of good school. And so they are really putting together all these expert and uh, teachers and students uh, uh, to to kind of share experience and to help them settle. So Andre was one who is really traveling all, all, all around the world 
uh, Europe with these 27 schools and doing, and suddenly he's locked. He doesn't really have that uh, that uh, job. So then he loses his job, uh, school is shut, and he is one who is really making bread in the house. Peter is already established and really middle class um, um, man, and Denisa too. But uh, I was really worried about Andre. And uh, uh, he said, look, we need to, uh, I, we are going to have a COVID wedding. And then I was thinking, this is great. This, this, this is most, most first possible scenario. He fly uh, uh, to uh, Slovakia in the middle of the uh, um, pandemic. He really get married. Nobody really want that. And it's a, a really COVID wedding. So it's nobody there. For, for Roma community, what they live about, life is all about family and all helping each other. And they're quite religious. So they really be, need to be in a church that's all the and he's suddenly modern scientist who really married <laughs> two of them really with the brother and and uh, um, and uh, brother's wife and that's it and grandmom who is recording that but it's turned out actually that is really such a progressive thinking because uh, uh, that's really save him because otherwise he would really have a job he would really have a partner he would really have a, actually he will be completely stuck and that's really kind of lift me up and then a moment when he said that uh, that his wife is pregnant and uh, i i really learned that she's pregnant exactly how it is a film and andre is also the one who never really have time because he really need to study then he need to work this for four days but he's working really from the early morning till very late night and he really in charge of 200 people and production is going 24 hours so it's it's kind of really scary a, a setup and uh, I just get this uh, video of it saying COVID test joke and then he don't go downstairs and there is the she's pregnant and his reaction is absolutely bad that he, he just kind of, kind of walk back and saying I could believe it this and that's it really so his wife still doesn't really really forgive him that he doesn't really react kind, kind of like normally if without camera he will react so kind of really this is the moment when I feel that's the beauty of the documentary. Mm. Um, I'm almost out of time, but just very quickly, you know, what do you hope people will take away from watching the film? Because as we've said, um, when we, lots of people perhaps don't know much about the Roma community or not understand exactly the stigma, the stigma that might be attached um, in, in Eastern Europe to those communities. Um, and, but it, as we said as well, it's also a very relevant time for these conversations about immigration to this country. Of course, previously, Brexit's already um, made things very difficult, but we're seeing things even tighten even more um, with the current Conservative government. And it does feel like a lot of empathy is needed, or at least some different types of dialogue need to be in the conversation rather than just sort of the headlines that we're hit with day in, day out, to realise that these are real people who could have such positive, com positive futures in this country. And, and we're just making it unbelievably difficult and, and creating a very hostile environment. So what do you hope the, the takeaways might be? But uh, I, I absolutely agree with you. I, I really think we are going in the wrong direction and I uh, it's, that's why I made this film. They're they are really beautiful contribution to this society. And when you have open society, you get quite a lot. So you have a freak of people who came, one was cleaning lady and a single mother. Another one is, was really 18 years old boy, uh, beaten up by skinhead. And the third one really had 10 years, 12 years and no education at all. And eight years after, you have a first Roma lawyer, first uh, doctor, first uh, uh, consul. It's uh, just uh, extraordinary. It's a beautiful contribution to the society. But it's also important that uh, we are all humans, and uh, uh, and we do. If we are humans and we have the same rights, so we really have the same opportunity. So it's kind of extraordinary that we are thinking about Rwanda story. I think that's kind kind of extreme. What is just go to wrong direction. And finally, just quickly, um, what do you think you'll be working on next after this? Are you also focusing um, on this community again, or you don't know what you're going to do next? I, I know what I'm going to do next. Uh, I'm going to do a uh, fiction uh, drama uh, based on the real story in uh, Leicester. Uh, Leicester is the most diverse city and we find quite extraordinary real story. So we are going to put together and make series. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with me. And I really can't wait for everyone else to be able to have the chance to leaving to remain from this Friday. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Take so care. Nice to see you. Thanks a lot. See you. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.